Hello, and welcome to Badass Moms, brought to you by the Holistic Therapies Directory. I'm Nicole Cruz, super busy mommy coach. Today's episode is my first solo episode in a while, and it's all about how to make new habits stick, even when it seems impossible, when your life is full to the brim, but you know that in order to get the results you want, you need to accomplish more, you need to add in more. And so I'll be telling you about how I've done it in the past. Um, I'm going through the process again right now, and I'll describe to you in detail the mind trip and the emotional roller coaster and how I'm dealing with it. And um, I'll get into the strategies that I, I thankfully have been trained in um, so that I can help you know, other mothers to go through this process. Um, and also I can get myself through it when I need to. But before we get into that, uh, the, the fight it, don't fear it challenge will be launching again. And I know so many people right now are going through really tough times. And so I've worked with my team and on March 1st, we're releasing a do it yourself version. And right now is the pre-sale and you can get it for just 675. Okay. That's 75% off if you buy it before it launches. And this is to help moms who are, you know, during this pandemic, it's just been horrific. And I know that for some people, no matter how much you value your body and your health, dropping, you know, $125 a week for coaching just isn't possible. And even the group coaching programs, even the, you know, the live fight it, don't fear it challenge is $97. Um, it's $48 right now for the early bird special. So check it out on the website. But I know that for so many families right now, it's hard enough to just buy the bare necessities. And so um, we've made it the most streamlined version we can to make it as accessible as possible. And so if you're interested in learning the resilience habits, as I call them for fitness, nutrition, and mindfulness to get to the top of your game, to be strong physically and mentally so that you can handle whatever life throws at you in the toughest situations. So you can be that mom who makes it seem easy, who's not stressed out amidst chaos Okay, if you want to learn those tricks that are based in science, in research, and in millennia old tradition, but also pulling from my own personal experience in which I thankfully already knew these strategies when my own life hit rock bottom and I was able to pull myself out quickly and get through it because of these strategies. Um, so if you're, if you're interested in learning about them and connecting with like-minded moms, join the challenge. Um, you can find information about both the uh, the live challenge and the do-it-yourself version at superbusymommycoach.com. Okay, just go to the programs tab and you'll see the fight it, don't fear it button near the top. Okay, superbusymommycoach.com. I also have a couple one-on-one -on -one slots opening up and I'm looking to fill them. And so if you want to apply and see if it's the right fit for you, you can follow me on Facebook or Instagram. I'm at super busy mommy coach and just shoot me a message saying, coach me just, uh, just a DM, just write the words, coach me. And we'll, uh, we'll start a complimentary consultation and application to see if it's the right fit. All right, now to dig in. <laughs> so um, forming a new habit. Um, so to give you context, a lot of you know my backstory. And, you know, like a lot of you, I mean, like most moms right now, it's sort of this unprecedented time where we're wearing many hats and, you know, work and family and everything's kind of melding together and you have to accomplish more than one thing at a time. Not like that's really anything new, but the intensity has just gone up so much. And um, so like a lot of you, you know, working full time um, business, you know, running the business. Um, my son is doing remote learning right now. Um, and so he's home with me. I don't have a caregiver. Um, you know, who's with us, you know, it's just me and him all day. Um, and then also having to keep up with my own health and nutrition and mindfulness practice, because um, I know that without those things, 
everything else will start to slip. Um, like if I'm not at the top of my game, I literally can't handle everything else. And so, um, you know, that's what life's been like. And a lot of you who are familiar with me know the workout methods I use. I, you know, the super busy mommy workout, how I incorporate, you know, some short bursts throughout the day, make it super flexible, um, how I, you know, have some, you know, shortcuts to meal planning so that you don't have to count and measure everything. Um, and so, you know, I've been doing that this whole time throughout the pandemic and, you know, like it's not my first crisis. And so, um, I guess, unfortunately <laughs> I've had experiences where I I've, I've had to kind of go through like really tough situations and use these strategies before. And so by now it was, you know, um, it, it wasn't really so stressful, like the transition into pandemic times and, you know, quarantines and all the rapid changes that came, um, was something that I was kind of used to. And, um, and so it wasn't, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't experience the, the stress and the disturbance, you know, the anxiety and the depression that w was very common. Um, but as we went through, um, I sort of realized that there were certain goals I had that weren't being accomplished. Um, and so, you know, my life, my life is full, you know, um, you know, work, you know, working a full-time job and running a business, you know, with an international <laughs> team online and, you know, everything else, you know, the remote schooling and the childcare and, you know, like in the middle of the day while you're working, having to get up and like, you know, clean up and make lunch and something spills and, you know, the whole deal, like it's what you, you're all going through. Right. Um, and so with all of that, I realized that I was not on track to reach certain goals. Like I'd kind of just hit a wall. And um, for a while I was like, oh, you know, I just have to wait it out. You know, these things take time. And so I did, I waited it out and it, it started to become clear that I needed to be doing more in order to accomplish what I want to accomplish. Um, and so, you know, for me, this isn't, um, a matter of like being hard on myself, which is what a lot of people say, like, why are you so hard on myself? I'm like, I'm not being hard on myself. I'm just thinking about the life I want and realizing what it takes to get there and deciding whether or not it's worth it. And in this case for me, it's worth it. And so, you know, the, if anything, the world is being hard. I'm not being, I'm not deciding that this is what it takes. The world is deciding that this is what it takes to accomplish it, right? So, um, so anyway, that's um, the position I found myself in. And, you know, I was like, okay, um, I need to be able to be more productive, right? So after a while, you know, when we're doing tasks, especially mental tasks, it's like your brain just kind of hits a wall, right? You just, it's hard to focus, you get that brain fog. Um, and I needed to be able to handle more. Um, I also, you know, during the pandemic, like a lot of people, I gained a few pounds and, you know, I wasn't really worried about it because I was still at a healthy weight. I had room that I could gain. Um, but, you know, I realized that for my business, um, you know, my business does better when I'm able to you know, show up looking the way people expect a fitness trainer to look. And the, the better my physique is, the better my business does. And that's part of my goals. And so I realized that, you know, some of my goals are suffering because I've allowed myself to still stay within a healthy, I'm still healthy, but to look different. Um, and while it's frustrating that that's the case, and that's just the way it is, right? So I could either go with it or not. But so I'm like, you know, I really have to, you know, get back to the physique I was in before, which, um, you know, I'm not too far from, but as a lot of you know, it's those, that, that last little bit, right? It's like, you know, that, that last 20% takes 80% of the effort. Um, and, you know, there were some other, you know, health issues, you know, I was realizing, you know, being stuck inside so much, um, you know, I was, I wasn't like walking places as much anymore. And I like, couldn't just make that time to walk. I was really stuck inside a lot with everything I had to do. Um, and so I realized, you know, I had to be more diligent about 
um, taking care of inflammation because I wasn't getting inflammation through the, the walking breaks throughout the day that I used to have. Um, and so I had to, you know, be a little stricter with, you know, some dietary and lifestyle things. Um, but overall, in general, there were just a lot of things I needed to add in. Um, I needed, you know, the, the climate, you know, the business climate changed a ton, right? It used to be that <laughs> online coaching wasn't that common. And especially like the text coaching model I used was, you know, no one was really doing it that way. Um, and then all of a sudden when gyms closed, everyone started doing it. And the, you know, the internet was flooded with programs that looked so similar. And so I'm navigating that new client. I realized that I needed to educate myself more and learn some new things. Um, and so I needed to add that in. And so I found myself, you know, thinking, okay, what can I cut out? And I was very real about that. And there wasn't much, really, there wasn't anything I could cut out on a regular basis. Um, and then what did I need to add in? And so I kind of made this daily checklist and you know what, I'm recording this in zoom so I can show you, <laughs> I can show you that checklist I made. And so let's just take a look at that real quick. Um, okay. Let's just share that. Okay, so here it is. Um, it's February 5th. I'm not sure when this will be published, um, but you can see, so I'm not really done with today. Um, but these are, you know, I have some supplements that I take for general health and um, I did start counting calories again because, um, you know, I kind of had things down to habit before and I wanted to kind of reevaluate, you know, my habits have changed since the pandemic started and I wanted to kind of see where I was at. Um, <laughs> those of you who know me know about the morning warm ups, which are separate than my actual workouts, not everyone. Um, oh, shout out to Betsy, Mama Made Strong, still working on. Um, uh, you know, fixing my kinetic chain from that old injury, which snowballed during pregnancy. Um, yeah, um, my mindfulness practice, I'm supposed to be doing, for this practice, it requires two hours a day. I'm working up to it. So here's where I am. Um, got my job, Eric's school work, super busy mommy coaching, stuff with my team. Um, and then these are, I'm going to do, you know, one um, learning or like some kind of coursework or learning every day. So choose one of those a day. And then of course, you got to put in those family goals too. Um, and so, you know, none of these are things that I wasn't doing at all before, right? Only a couple of them are new. You know, the mindfulness practice is relatively new. Um, you know, the, the coursework, some of those courses are new, but overall it's things that I was doing, but um, not always at the same time, right? So there, there would be like kind of waves. So there would be, you know, I would, I would always be doing all of them. I wouldn't completely neglect my nutrition or neglect my fitness. You all know that, but the intensity might change, right? So I might kind of go, you know, to the minimal for fitness when I was going really strong with the business, or then when I was working really hard on fitness, maybe I would, you know, go do a little, little bit less for the business. Or sometimes, unfortunately, when everything got really crazy, playtime with Eric would end up being sidelined a bit more for, you know, a few days. And so I realized that that was why I was hitting a wall and that if I wanted to get over that wall, I needed to be consistently doing all of those things at, at more of a full strength, you know, not hundred percent, but like 80%, you know, or, and, and not fluctuating with them as much. Um, and I honestly thought it would be impossible, right? So I, I knew that this is, what it will take to get me to where I want to go. Um, and I had to try, but I really thought it was going to be impossible. It's like, there's no way I can actually do this, but I'll hate myself if I don't at least try. Right. So at least if I try, I know that I did the best I can. And then maybe I, you know, know that I have to hold off until things in my life change or whatever happens and I can, you know, put in another effort. Um, 
And so this was sort of my New Year's resolution. Um, no, I'm not a New Year's resolution person because why is that magically the day you set goals? I always have goals, but it just happened to fall at that time this year. And so I did it. Um, I have a New Year's resolution and that's what that checklist is. Um, and I have one for January too. Um, I kept track of it. And so, um, you know, I started the process and you know, the first thing is to be very clear and I made a checklist and then you have to, I think it's really helpful to have it in your face, right? So like I hung the checklist somewhere and I had reminders in different places and it doesn't have to be signs, but like whatever my um, sets are for that day, like my workouts, I'll take the weights and put them in a place where I actually have to walk over them many times so that when I walk over them, it's like, oh yeah, let me just pick these up and do a set real quick. And then I'll go about doing whatever else I was doing. Right. So, um, so, you know, having those reminders because, um, otherwise like, it's not like it's magically going to pop into you. What's the matter, bud? Got my business partner here. Why are you cold? Did the shower run out of hot water? Did you take another like 45 minute shower again? Well, I came out at 10 40. Yeah. Okay. That was almost an hour shower. That's why the hot water ran out. It, it, it got a little cold. It did get cold. So why don't you go put your clothes on, okay? And then if you want, you can say a quick hi to everybody. Okay. Okay, but go put clothes on first. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay, I have to do this. I have to do this now. So you have to go get your clothes on. Go, go, go. Um, the realities, right, people? <laughs> I love it. So anyway, um, yeah, so I, it seemed impossible, but I, I you know, I, I started off, I made the checklist and um, I, and I would actually go through, um, you know, and as you saw, I literally check things off of it. And so that checklist is on Google Drive. So it's on my computer. Um, it's on my phone. Um, so even if I'm like traveling or out somewhere, I can check it off. Um, and, you know, I put reminders on my whiteboard that's like in a very central place in my apartment. Um, so having having those reminders, because as you're going about your day, it's like, it's not going to just it's just gonna fall through the cracks if it's not in your face. Because again, this is geared towards people whose lives are already full, right? You're not like sitting around like, huh, I'm bored, what should I do? That's a different problem, a valid, like we, we can make an episode about that, but that's not what this is, this is primarily geared towards, okay? So um, I have those reminders everywhere. I knew exactly what I needed to do and I kind of made a plan and then you have to have backup plans because this won't just magically happen right so a lot of people um they so let's say they have the plan that they're going to wake up and work out before the kids get up not my plan i'm not a morning person but a lot of people have that plan and then so you wake up early and you start your workout and then you hear screaming it turns out your toddler had a nightmare and wet the bed there goes your workout time so they're like oh see i knew this wouldn't work Right. And, and that's not true. So being proactive is super important. So hanging the signs around, making the checklist to so hold yourself accountable and being proactive in, in having backup plans. Right. So um, you, if, if your plan doesn't work, you need a backup and then you need a backup for your backup and maybe a backup for your backups backup. <laughs> that's really important too. And so I kind of like had that in place in my head. Um, and it was a little more second nature for me because this is very related to topics that I'm used to, you know, problem solving for, for other people. Um, but I did have those in my head. Um, you know, like sometimes, okay, let's face it. Most days when I'm doing my morning meditation, Eric comes in and like, kind of like, you know, tries to see like are you sleeping mom are you awake he'll sit on my lap because he wants to cuddle he'll give me kisses which is actually really cute um and i'm just like i'm just gonna stay here and meditate through it <laughs> and if 
if that's the meditation I get today, that's the meditation I get today. Um, for other things like food, I have to have some backups, you know, like stock up with some non-perishables that can be used if something goes wrong um, that can keep me within, you know, my macros. And while it's not on the spreadsheet, I just want to make clear it's not all about macros, right? So like, you know, my actual health goals are like I let's take them for granted at this point. Okay. Like I've, I'm already making sure I'm hitting my micros. I have the right balance of, um, you know, plant foods for my body, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like I've gone through my food experiments <laughs> to figure out what my body needs. And now I'm fine tuning the macros because a lot has changed in my life and my needs have changed along with it. And I need to kind of reassess. Um, and you can reassess without tracking and, and measuring everything, by the way. I just kind of like it. I'm a data kind of person and I like the numbers. I like how concrete they are. And that motivates me because it's black and white. If you're not a numbers person, there are other ways and you can ask me about those, but um, I teach those. But anyway, this is what I'm doing for me. Okay. So, um, so yeah, you know, I kind of had those backups in place and then I started and it felt so hard and horrible. Um, but so I want to go through that a little bit because that's important. Now, for this plan of adding stuff in, um, I was very strategic about making sure that everything I added in sort of, we'll say paid for itself, right? So if I was going, like if my life was already full and I'm already exhausted from everything I'm doing, and I wanna do more stuff, then I have to add in stuff that will energize me so that I have the energy to do that stuff, right? Um, like I can't just take extra time. It's like a, a losing, like the math doesn't work, right? It's like, it's a losing formula. So I had to think about that. And so the, the mindfulness practice I'm doing is one that specifically helps to raise your stress threshold and helps to um, raise your capacity for being productive. Um, that's not the only things it does, but those are a couple of the effects you, you're expected to notice if you practice this type of meditation consistently. Um, and so right now I can't do the full two hours because I am not productive enough during my meditations to get the benefits that allow me to carve out that much time, right? I would just um, lose I would lose an extra 45 minutes of sleep per day and just be a zombie. And that's not really helpful, but I am at the point where I can do that hour at night and losing sleep for that is worth it. I, my meditations are productive enough that I gain those benefits back. The, you know, I increase my energy enough from the meditation. I increase my mental capacity. I decrease my stress and my burnout enough from the meditation that I can take an hour out of sleep if needed. Um, and that 15 minutes in the morning as well. And that's what I was doing because, you know, the, the benefits don't come instantly. And so for the first few weeks, you know, it was brutal. I was going to bed two or three o'clock in the morning, a lot of days, um, just exhausted and pushing through and um, then being exhausted and having to force myself to do the workouts anyway. <laughs> and you guys know what it is because a lot of you have been through this many times. Um, and unfortunately, a lot of you didn't have a quality plan to, to get to kind of like get those benefits back, you know, to you know, again, make it pay for itself. Um, because like, if you're just trying to do it yourself, you may not know the tricks. Um, and, you know, thankfully, like, I'm very grateful that I knew these tricks before my life got difficult. And so I know, I know exactly what to do so that, you know, um, you know, for the sleep I'm losing, I'm gaining something that kind of offsets it for the, you know, um, extra energy I'm putting into a fitness regimen, I'm getting it back so that I'm not just completely burning out, um, you know, same with nutrition and stuff. Um, and so, yes, uh, that was another factor to take into account. Okay, so again, we have, <laughs> you know, making the checklist, um, you know, 
putting it in your face so you can see it, um, you know, making a plan and then a gajillion backup plans and um, making sure that anything you're adding in is paying for itself somehow. Then you have the actual stages that you go through and these are a mind trip. And it was really funny because <laughs> coaches are notorious sometimes for like completely forgetting to take their own advice. And this was totally a case of that where, you know, I was going through it and a couple weeks into it, I was like, God, this is just impossible. This is never going to happen because I had like fallen off the wagon. And then it hit me like, oh, wait a minute. I'm just at that stage. I'm going, I'm, I'm going through the stages of habit. I'm forming a new habit right now. And I'm going through the stages of habit formation and I'm at this stage. Oh, okay, this is fine. Everything will be fine. But <laughs> it was like, it had to occur to me in an epiphany. For some reason it hadn't occurred to me before I started this checklist that I should expect to go through the stages of habit formation, even though, duh, right? <laughs> but um, anyway, stages of habit formation. So the first stage is when it's super new and exciting and you're super motivated and you're inspired and it's like, rah, rah, go, right? So you're really into it and it, it feels great. Like your excitement kind of takes you through it. Um, but then it's super hard. And so, you know, when it's not all new and inspiring and exciting as much, then the hard, you, it's, you really start to feel how tough it is. And it, it's just like, oh, this kind of sucks, right? This isn't fun. I just want to, you know, like do my workout, not on camera for once. Like, I just don't want to post my workout. I just want to do it, you know, in my pajamas with no bra and like not worry about the world seeing me or, you know, like, I just want to sleep those 15 minutes. Like, can I skip that morning meditation? I do not want to do it. I want to stay in bed for those 15 minutes and sleep. Um, at night, like, God, I am falling asleep do I need to do this hour of meditation? Like literally sometimes nodding off during the meditation, right? And so you go through that not fun stage um, and you fall off the wagon a lot during that time because it's, it's not habit yet and it just feels crappy, right? So I went through that and there were times when I was, I mean, from losing all that sleep because I wasn't, as I wasn't super efficient at getting all of this done yet. I hadn't started to see the payback from these habits and it just takes more thought. It takes more, you know, figuring out at the beginning. And so it took longer and I was going to bed later and just being exhausted and then doing it again the next day. And it's just like, God, I can't do this. You know, it got to the point where I was so tired. I was having trouble focusing. And so all my work was taking longer, which meant I went to bed even later. And I'm like, this is impossible. This is totally impossible. I can't do it. There's no way this is going to happen. And then I realized that if that's true, I can't reach my goal. And all of a sudden the fire lit back up under my butt. <laughs> and I was like, okay, no, no, that's, I, I can't entertain that possibility. I can't entertain the fact that this isn't going to happen and that certain things in my life are gonna stay this way forever because, you know, well, honestly, I'm so grateful for the way my life is right now. Some of you know where it's been and right now it's really good. I just feel like, it can, I feel like it can get better. I feel like I want some, there are other things I want and probably the most important is more quality time with Eric and the pandemic has given me more quality time with him. I'm with him all day, every day and just experiencing what it's like. And then knowing that when things go back to normal, I'm probably going to be away from him for 12 and a half hours a day again. I that is what lit the fire under my butt. I'm like, I can't, I can't. Oh, there he is. It's my little business partner. Hi, All guys. nice and clean now. <laughs> I just, I just got dressed and I just came out of the shower. Oh, awesome. All right. You let me record the rest of this episode. Okay. Um, Maybe I can film you the video. So. Okay. But do it in your room so that it doesn't interrupt my video. Okay. Um, you have to do it in your room, okay? I'll be super, super, super. In your room, not out here. Why? How 
I watch videos. With your headphones on then. And no talking, okay? Um, <laughs> he started um, vlogging. So he's a little vlogger now um, because they do what you do, right? And that's the other reason I can't let my healthy habits slip because even though sometimes it takes away from our quality time, I know that he's going to do what he sees me doing. And I know how important it is to, I mean, to have like this, to keep this body, this one body, we get healthy to be able to function in it, be independent, to feel good in it. And I know that the best way for me to help him have that is for him to see me eating right and exercising and meditating and doing the things I have to do so that he starts doing it. And he has started doing it. It's really nice. But anyways, I digress. Back to the stages of habit formation. Um, so after the new and exciting phase, it's like the honeymoon phase, right? Then it's just like, oh, this is hard and it kind of sucks and I'm not feeling the benefits yet and I just want to stop. Um, and it feels impossible. And during the stage, you fall off the wagon a lot, um, partially because it feels crappy and partially because there's a lot of trial and error that goes into incorporating a new habit into your life. There's a lot of figuring out, right? Like you might try doing it at this time of day and that doesn't work. So you have to try it at a different time of day or there are different problems that pop up and you have to figure out how to deal with them. Um, and so for various reasons, you just fall off the wagon a lot. And this is the stage when most people give up, not because they're quitters, but because they look at the evidence in front of them and conclude, this isn't working. <laughs> this is not working. You know, I gave it an effort. I'm trying my best and it's not working. Um, and so they falsely, they erroneously conclude that they need to try something else or that it's not going to work for them. Um, and again, not because they're quitters, not because they're being lazy, because that's what the evidence looks like. But it's a trick <laughs> because that's a predictable stage of habit formation. And you, you actually just have to wait it out. Yeah, that's the only way to get through it is to just fall off the wagon, get back on the wagon, fall off the wagon, get back on the wagon. And so having that, you know, positive outlook, like, oh, I just fell off the wagon. Oh, I'm in that stage of habit formation. Okay, let me just get back on the wagon. I'll get through this stage. Like, that's it. <laughs> and so um, I fell off the wagon a couple times. Um, I went um, on a on a weekend getaway and you know, cooked and made some dessert and, um, you know, like had some wine and, you know, like everything you would want in a weekend getaway. And then, you know, threw my goals off when I came back, you know, um, you know, I didn't work out and I was just like, God, I can't stick to this. Right. Um, and first of all, it's okay to like have a day or two, but it should be strategic, right? Um, and so my emotions and my reactions were overblown because it was okay for me to do that for one weekend, as long as it's not like, you know, all the time. But at the time I was feeling like this will never work. It's impossible. I can't do it, blah, blah, blah. And, and I was really thinking like I was, emotional like oh my god I'm never going to hit my goals and then that's when it hit me like wait a minute I'm at that stage of habit formation okay okay this is cool it's fine I just have to get through it I just have to keep getting back on the wagon be patient it'll stick and so I did and it happened faster than I thought honestly so much faster than I thought um it started like now I can get through the checklist pretty easily. And, um, you know, I allow myself a little flexibility every, so I give myself like one day every other weekend when he's with his dad, when I'll like, you know, say like go to the city for a day or um, I'm in New York city, we call Manhattan the city. Um, <laughs> it's like, we're, we're just that full of ourselves, like the city. But anyway, um, 
you know, we, so I, I go to Manhattan for the day or, you know, sometimes crash at a friend's place and I won't have control over what I eat. So I give myself that flexibility and work it in and plan for it. And that's fine. Real life is important. Just plan for it. Um, and so a lot of times I'll kind of, you know, compensate, like I'll know the day before and the day after I'll have to do a little extra in certain areas of my checklist in order to compensate. Sometimes I don't have to compensate because I know it'll be fine. Um, but yeah, other than that, I've pretty much been sticking to it a hundred percent. Um, and yeah, so I'm not quite at the next stage yet though, because the next stage comes when you reach this point, which is an, a really important turning point. Um, it's the first time you fall off the wagon and it feels crappy, right? I'm almost there. I'm almost there, but I'm not quite there yet. So, um, you know, as you implement these new habits, if you've chosen the right plan, you should start to feel the benefits and I am starting to feel the benefits. And so sticking to the checklist has been a lot easier. And now sometimes I'm actually, you know, going to bed at a reasonable time when I can actually wake up and, you know, not be a zombie, um, which is an accomplishment in and of itself, because for a long time, even without this checklist, that was impossible. Like, you know, single mom life. Um, and I know some of you with four kids, it's even harder. So I get it. But, um, but anyway, I got to the point where I was feeling the benefits of the meditation enough that even when I went to sleep late, I would feel rested enough to get through the next day without being a total burned out zombie. Um, you know, I'm feeling the energy benefits from the fitness. Um, I'm feeling my, you know, I'm feeling, you know, inflammation symptoms subside from paying closer attention to my nutrition, all of that. And so I'm starting to get that payback. But the turning point is when you have to, whether you fall off the wagon for whatever reason, whether it was, you know, the wise decision at the time, because there's something more important, whether it's, you know, you just had low willpower for no reason. It doesn't really matter why you fall off the wagon, whether it was the right decision or not, but you, you can't stick to your plan for whatever reason. And it feels crappy. <laughs> like you're like, Oh my God, how did I ever live without these habits? This is horrible. Oh my God. I have no energy. Oh my God. I feel like crap from eating that crap food. Oh my God. I didn't work out for a day. And now I'm just like, you know, I feel so lethargic, like I need to do something, right? <laughs> Whatever it is, oh my God, I didn't meditate and I'm so scatterbrained, like I can't focus, I need to meditate, you know, oh my God, like I missed this with the business and now I just saw, you know, whatever. Now I, everything's gotten so much harder because I didn't stick to the system. And now I have to put out this fire and that fire and that fire, whatever the consequence is, now that you've been doing it long enough to feel the benefits, it feels crappy when you stop. And that's a turning point because once you hit that, it becomes so much easier because there's an incentive, a natural incentive, right? It's not about pushing harder and discipline. It's literally about rewarding yourself because you feel better. And so you want to do it, even though it's not always easy, right? Like sometimes you do want to go to sleep instead of meditate or working out or whatever, but you, you know, you're going to feel better. And so you, you do kind of want to do it. So anyway, I, I should be hitting that soon. Um, and so once you, after you hit that point, you still fall off the wagon, but it's a lot easier to get back on. Um, you enjoy whatever the habit is a lot more and, um, and you, you start falling off the wagon less and less and less. And then finally you hit the point where it becomes a habit and it feels weird if you don't do it, right? Like brushing your teeth. If you don't brush your teeth, you just kind of feel all weird and gross. Like, why would I not brush my teeth, right? Um, and it gets to that point where if you wake up and it'll happen, it'll always happen. Like you can't expect, like there's nothing you should stick to every day for the rest of your life probably, right? There are exceptions to everything. There are times when there's, a crisis that's just so important or an emergency where everything else falls to the wayside, right? So let's not be dogmatic. Let's have a level head about this, but you know, you'll get to the point where 
like if you go a whole day without working out, it just feels weird. It's just like, Oh God, I can't believe I did that. I just, I need to do something like, <laughs> you know, like, you know, whatever, like I, my knees bothering me. And so I've been, you know, working out in different ways, but I haven't run in a while. And I'm just like, God, I miss running. I feel like I need to run. And there are so many days when I'm like, Oh, I have time. You know what? Let me go for a run. Oh, I can't because of my knee. Damn it. (laughs) It just, it's, it becomes a part of your life that you don't want to let go of. Um, And so that's the final stage. That's when you have successfully integrated a new habit into your life. So anyway, um, I should be going, you know, to the next stage very soon. I can't wait. Um, And I hope that this helps you to identify when you're going through some of these stages and helps you to figure out how to propel yourself forward with a new habit and, you know, remembering some of those hacks, right? So um, again, from the beginning, knowing your action steps, making a list, a checklist, whatever it is, um, you know, having it in your face, um, especially in the places where you have to do things so that it's much less, it's much um, more difficult to forget about it. (laughs) And then, you know, making a plan and then having backups and more backups and more backups. (laughs) Um, And then of course, making sure that anything you're adding in is going to pay you back, whatever you're taking it out of, making sure it pays you back somehow so that you're not just burning yourself to the ground. Um, And then going through the stages, right? There's the honeymoon stage where it's exciting and inspiring. There's the, you know, the stage where then it just kind of feel, you know, excitement wears off and it feels hard and you're not seeing the benefits yet and it feels impossible and you fall off the wagon a lot. The turning point where you fall off the wagon and it feels really crappy and you miss the habit then you fall off the wagon less and less um, and it feels a lot easier because you miss it when you don't do it and finally you have a fully integrated habit and it feels weird whenever you don't stick to it i hope that was helpful um if you find this podcast brings you value one of the best ways you can help other people to find it is to leave a rating and a review. Um, So subscribe, leave a rating and a review if you would like. And if you'd like some more resources, if you'd like some, you know, to find a community of like-minded moms, make sure you go to superbusymommycoach.com. You can also find me at superbusymommycoach on Facebook and Instagram. Join the Single Moms Thriving Facebook group that I lead. Um, It's not you know, fitness and nutrition, it's a, just a general, um, group for empowering single moms to create lives we love because there are tons of single mom support groups and survival groups, but I couldn't really find many about thriving. So (laughs) now there is one. Um, Anyways, um, If you have any thoughts on this, leave it in the comments, shoot me a DM on Facebook or Instagram. I love to hear from you directly. And once again, fight it, don't fear it challenge, either the live version or the pre-sale of the do it yourself version. And I have those two one-on-one slots. If you want to go through the stages of habit formation together, um, DM me, coach me on Facebook or Instagram. If you're a holistic practitioner, or if you're looking for a holistic practitioner, make sure you check out the Holistic Therapies directory. Um, They have really made a big difference in my life. And you can go to their website, holistictherapiesdirectory.com to search for a practitioner or to get your own business up there and tell the world about the great work you're doing. Hope you all have a wonderful morning, afternoon, or evening, depending what time zone you're in and when you're listening to this. And I will see you on the next episode of Badass Moms.